Try to keep this short, but wanted to go over this. This is the infamous six liter IPR valve failure. So this is a new Motocraft IPR. Uh, bought it through Rock Auto for like 170 bucks. O'Reilly's, AutoZone, all them will try to sell you a standard ignition for like 380 bucks. Don't bother, just unless you're in a pinch. And if that's the case, get theirs, put it in, order this one. When it comes in, take theirs back, tell them it failed open, and get your money back. Because they're, uh, they're not going to last. So the main failure in these is this magnet. And you can see from the discoloration, they just get hot. It's a shitty spot for it to be. It mounts right on the turbo. I'll show you. Find my flashlight. There's several videos out there on these things. Diesel Tech Ron is probably the best one. So it goes right there on the high pressure oil pump, right behind the hot side of the turbo. That's your Y pipe coming in. So it's just a just a bad spot. But anyway, I want to do a video. I haven't found any videos of this thing broke down and how it works. So going from well, I guess we'll start on this end because this is the end that fails most often so this is your magnet it's, it's basically just solenoid valve so that's here tube inside that tube is this little cylinder which is all this tube will have oil in it so the oil comes in and it builds some oil pressure in there not much but it's you know it's enough to have a little hydraulic effect with it this rod contacts this face and then travels through this cap, which goes on the end, end of that tube. And then this rod right here will push on this rod. And it's just a little, little guy. And it's got a point on it. So it's like a, uh, just a valve seat. And what that does is it'll push on this, whoops, sorry, this piece, and it'll plug that little hole. And what that does is that allows your oil, it plugs that, closes the shuttle valve so that your oil doesn't pour out of the drain back to the sump. It goes through these tighter holes that create your 500 PSI for your injectors to fire to start the truck. And of course, all this happens, it happens from this end, but your oil and everything's coming from this side, from your high, pre from your high pressure oil pump. So your high pressure oil pump's pushing oil in, and then this does all the shuttling around to create that, to boost that pressure up for at idle. So. When you start the truck, turn the key on, 12 volts goes into this sensor, create or, uh, valve, electromagnet shoves everything forward, closing off your drains, forcing high pressure oil to your injectors to fire them. Now, from what I've read and from my experience, because I've had this six liter quite a while, I got 370,000 miles on it, and this is the third time I've had issues with this. First time was just debris, cleaned it up, worked fine. After that, it's always been a, a magnet failure. And there's really nothing you can do at that point because these, from what I've searched and tried to find, you can't buy just this, which is really too bad because you wouldn't be able to change it in the truck, I don't think, but I guess if you're determined enough. But all you'd have to do is pull it out, out of the truck, get this shield off, pop this off, pop a new one on, put your shield back on. It's just got little tabs in there you can kind of pry up with a screwdriver when it's on the bench, but it'd be it'd be hard to do in the truck just from the location. It's, if you have voltage here and there is, you suspect debris in here, <coughs> excuse me, you can test this, by putting, uh, you got two pins in there, 
you can put 12 volts on your hot pin, ground on your negative pin with some alligator clips. You don't want to touch them together. And then they, uh, they make all kinds of special fittings and stuff you can use to adapt to this. But I just took a piece of Tigon tubing, slip it over this. You want to do it with the screen on just to limit any debris getting shoved in here from your compressor or moisture. I guess moisture you're not really going to be able to stop, but any kind of debris or anything. Um, put that on there. Put pressure on it without it energized. And listen to the airflow coming out of here. It should be quite a bit because when it's not energized, it's open. And uh, then when you put 12 volts on it, it should shove everything forward and close it. And then when you put air on it, you should hear a distinct change in the volume of air coming out of this. If there isn't, then this has failed or you have some debris in one of these surfaces. I'm not saying it's impossible to pull this apart, clean everything, put it back in. If you know that your shuttle's good, which you should be able to hear it moving or you might even be able to see it you know things moving in there a little bit they're not going to move much but, <clears throat> but anyway the amount of tediousness and work that would go into pulling this down to clean it to me wouldn't be worth it because this will keep your truck from starting so to me it's more beneficial to spend the you know it, it was Right around 200 bucks, I paid, uh, I think it was $30 for overnight shipping, FedEx Express. To me, it's worth it to know it's brand new and, you know, I ain't got to worry about it. But uh, it is, I believe it would be doable to pull it apart and maybe there is some debris in this seat. My first spot I would go would be this little needle here. It might be some debris on there or the the screen could be damaged i mean if your screen's damaged then that's a that's a good indication you got some debris in there but really the only way debris could get in there is from this end so if if your screen's all intact you might just save yourself the headache get a new one um uh, this had a heat shield on it from the factory but it was pretty piss poor you know over the years it's kind of rotted away Actually, this is, a, this is a piece of it that's left. You know, it's just a little piece of insulation fabric. Used to have aluminum on it. So I am I built some new ones. I kind of looked around, didn't really see, uh, see one that I could get by itself. There's some companies that sell these that come with a new shield. But if you want to build your own... I just used a leather glove, an uh, old pair of welding gloves, and some Velcro, and some uh, metal, this is called metal men tape. Just got this at O'Reilly's, it was like four bucks, but it's it's rated for 250 degrees, which should be uh, pretty close to what that thing should ever see. I mean, it, it's got some space between it and the turbo, so it's mostly just radiant heat it's seeing. It's not a... It's not like it's touching it directly. So i give you some measurements on that in case you just want to build one and throw it on there without having to pull it out of the truck. It fits nice. So my overall length is five and a half. Overall width is three inches. And then you're gonna have one end that's longer than the other with your, your sensor holes about three inch on center. And I just did a, a half inch by three eighths hole. So on the uh, move some stuff out of the way here. So on the this end, so my overall was three. Right here's two. So I took an inch out of here by two inch, and then same thing. I took an inch out of this side by inch and a half. Took some three M. Adhe spray adhesive for the back of my uh, Velcro because it didn't really want to stick on that leather very good. And what this will do is it'll sit over this sensor once I got this in the truck and then I can wrap it 
wrap it around, Velcro it in place, and then just kind of tuck this down. And then I made a second piece like this. And this one is three and a half overall length by two inch overall width. And I just took a three quarter by three quarter notch out of each side of that, centered. So it just came in three quarter on each side, three quarter out. And what this is gonna do, this little tail on here, I'll tape onto my wiring in the truck, just above the plug. And then this will sit down and wrap around that plug itself to help insulate that a little bit. So then it's pretty well covered. Another thing I'm gonna try to do when I put it in is you know, put it in and position this so it's facing away from the turbo, this plug end. I don't know if it's going to make that much of a difference. We'll find out. I mean, it's It's got to be better than nothing. So, and then on the truck itself, in case you're not sure, but there's plenty of videos out there. Uh, Diesel Tech Ron is a really good source, his videos. It's too bad he's not with us anymore. He's, he's a treasure trove of knowledge on these six liters. So right there, that's where it goes, right under the hot side of the turbo, right where your Y pipe connects. Now I've seen videos and uh, read on forums where guys have gotten in there with just the socket, which is this guy here. This one I just got at O'Reilly's. It's a, uh, there's the number if you wanna look it up. But it's just a, uh, I don't even have a size on it, but I think it's, it's inch and seven sixteenths, roughly, inch and a half maybe. But uh, it's just got this slot milled in it. Now, I've seen videos where they've reduced this down to a quarter inch drive, and they they get in there just the way it is without removing anything. But to make it easier on you, and because I want to do the heat shielding change and you know all that, I pulled my degas bottle, laid it off to the side, removed my air intake from the turbo to the air filter, and then I also pulled my ficum out. And that gives you plenty of room to work on this thing. I mean, I got big hands, so it's, uh, I needed the extra room. But anyway, that'll get you in there. Um, inch and seven sixteenths, I, I stuck in my mind is this is the one I built the first time this failed because I didn't have one. Um, this is an inch, inch and seven sixteenths deep well impact, which it's a little long for what you're doing. It'll work. If, uh, if I didn't buy that socket, which is only like 25 bucks at O'Reilly's or you probably get them online cheaper than that. If I didn't buy that one and I was going to use this again, I would take a good three quarters of an inch off this end because you only need to, you know, the nut that you're grabbing is real short, real narrow, so you don't need much room to grab it. And I wouldn't use an impact socket. This was all I had laying around. That was a spare. I had two of them for some reason. So I had to grind it down to be able to fit because where this nut clears the how the cover of the high pop you ain't got a whole lot of room for the socket bill to turn so with an impact it was too heavy so i had to shave it down so i was able to turn it um, if you had a regular chrome socket you probably wouldn't have to grind on it at all it'd probably fit just fine so that's that but anyway i'm gonna get ready to put this back in and uh Hopefully this little heat shield works so you get some benefit out of this video and have fun. Pleasures of a six liter owner.